previously. We're what? in the Alps. On an Alp. We're on an Alp. Well, we got told off by an angry German lady in um, the camper van place. We've travelled for three days, so now we adventure, we hope. Well, it was beautiful sunshine, and now we're going through the Croatian hills. It's just opened up, the weather's just opened up, so uh, Jamie's finding his waterproof, but it mistakenly put them at the bottom of a pan you just hadn't packed correctly this morning. So yeah, he's had to dig those out. I've ignored 26 years of military training, so I thought I knew better, and stuffed my waterproof at the very bottom of my dry bag. Honestly, I only checked every other place because I had no idea where to put them, because I thought this morning, it's hot, sunny, I don't need waterproofs. And having battled the rain for so long, we decided to find solace. In fact, it was so dry, we spent the night. What are you up to? Washing blankets. Well, washing underwear. Um, yeah, we're a few days in now, and the uh, the essentials ran out uh, a couple of days ago, really. So we've been recycling without washing. So for me, it is. Uh, so yeah, so we're just doing some essentials. Underwear. Mark's had his go. My turn now. I'm not sure they're clean. We've definitely rummaged some fragrant water around some socks and pants. Still raining on the Bosnian border. I've got a bit of a thick head after many, many beers last night. It's weird because you put in the camera thing, I've no idea what to do. I'm drunk in a queen sized bed. <laughs> but we're excited for today. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah. We're going to head towards Sarajevo, which is uh, a big city, obviously, in Bosnia. Picture a lot on the news, 92 to 95, the Bosnian War, which we sort of grew up knowing about, obviously. So, I'm gonna go and see some bits about that. Yeah, I'm quite excited. There's some interesting bits that we've seen, so we've, we've heard a lot of the names of places. So, yeah, it'd be, uh, be interesting to go and find out about that. So, I'm gonna take um, an adventurous route there, but probably not off road, simply because it is so wet, it has been pouring down overnight. So we're going to probably small road it there, I think, and then night up in Sarajevo and then see what the weather's like for off-road tomorrow to, for a few days towards Belgrade. The rain was relentless. Hinlock, what's all this about? I don't know if your camera's picking up on that, but I just have I've got this tiny little clear vision bit there and some around the edges in this weather, riding around Bosnian mountains with next to no vision, even though it's got a pin lock on, so it was an absolute drama, I can tell you that. So we've just found this little shelter, removed the pin lock for now, because that was dangerous. Yeah, it's just a bus shelter actually, it's a little bus shelter, but you probably see there, so over that, that's what we've just ridden through. And so we went up into the cloud and it got really claggy um, and then Mark was basically a double blockage of vision so we had to come here just to stop off and try and sort it out and this is the only place we can find that's got enough shelter to be some dry. Yeah because it's it wasn't built up on the on the inside of it it's between the visor and the pin lock screen so no way of clearing it out. Right, at least now I can clear my visor by just lifting it and getting rid of some of that mist. Far from ideal, but it's, it's okay. Today's going to be wet, we accepted that, and that's what we're doing. We're going to embrace wet, but vision needs to be a thing. And so embrace it we did, along some of Bosnia's most beautiful roads. It even started to dry out. My hands were dry, and it took us off-road. Eventually, all roads led to Sarajevo. 
where we didn't actually film anything during the evening that we were there. But we did take lots of photos. You know, YouTubers and all. So we're here in Sarajevo, uh, just had a night here last night and we were chatting to some, some locals. It's a really interesting city to walk around. Um, as you might be able to see next to me, these are all bullet holes and remnants from the war. It's quite a poignant thing for, for Mark and I. You know, we grew up watching the news about the war going on in, in Bosnia uh, and it was probably part and parcel of what led us into the idea of coming into the military, I suppose. So coming here is kind of a, a tale of two halves. You know, it's quite emotive for us in a sense uh, because we have kind of connected to this place in some way you know, through, our, through our career. But as you walk around the city, a lot of the lower level stuff has kind of been modernised and it's quite nice, you know, it's um, obviously, as you would expect, wanted to forget what's going on in a, in a way. But if you look up, most of the buildings have still got, still got bullet holes in them. And uh, so it's quite an interesting, interesting place to come if you've got sort of any memories of, of the Bosnian war. So as you walk around, there's the Roses of Sarajevo, as they've called, um, where the mortars came down on the ground, obviously devastating effect but they've memorialised, uh, well, a number of them, if not all of them, and we visited a few last night. You can still see where the mortar exploded on the ground. And uh, yes, it's terrified to think what it might have actually been to be in that area. Um, really quite emotive in that one sense, um, to think this stuff just raining in from the sky, there to hurt, maim and kill, you know? It's terrifying to think that that was ground zero. Well, the other thing that happened last night is we chatted to some locals and that was really cool. We got some good information and um, it's kind of guided what we're going to do today. And that's, we're going to go and head to the Bosnian pyramids, which we'd never heard of. Um, and they were kind of discovered when they were looking for mass grave sites and things like that. And apparently the size of them rivals those in Egypt. And they're kind of not documented an awful lot, I don't think. So that's a really interesting thing. And it's only about half an hour from here. so. That's the plan for today. We've done Sarajevo and had a nice walk around. We bought a few souvenirs, including some Bosnian coffee. So now it's time to just get the wheels turning again and come move on to have a look at some pyramids before heading off to the northeast. So, yeah. So uh, this lady's been looking after us, uh, got us checked in last night um, and is our latest subscriber to the channel actually. But uh, if you're ever in Sarajevo and you want somewhere to keep your bike, Hotel Corner, perfect place. They've got a nice area for the bikes and you get some of the best receptionists we've found on the trip. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. There's some keys for the room. Okay. Thank you for last night. Uh, Who's there? A sticker for you. Wow. There you go. I'll put it on a car. I mean, it's crazy car and bike, but it's okay, right? They yeah. both ride, so it's good. Thank you so much. No you're problem. You're so kind. You're so lovely. Somebody say the, it's uh, the connect the tunnel to the top. Right. But it's the mystery. I go in the tunnel 1985. Right. Maybe 100 meters because there was just too small hole to go inside. Right. And now the people not make nothing up, just clean down. Right. Wow. It's very interesting. Do you think go. they'll ever have a, a look, take the trees away and... Up? Yeah. Up. Oh, you look down, it's because before uh, maybe 25 years, they cut all the trees. But when you go up from the cut kind, here, when you look, like a pyramid, you know. Right, okay. It's good. That's good. Last give me choice. Kamala. <laughs> oh, that was really cool. Well, the locals telling us about the hill and all the area around him. It's obviously fallen on tough times, but, but what a cool guy nonetheless. Yeah, I don't know. It definitely looks pyramid shaped and it's got straight lines. It's a straight line hill. My military training tells me that you don't get straight lines in nature. It's a seven S's. I don't know them all, but shape, shadow, shine, slow movement, silhouette, straight lines I want to say some others but but anyway you don't get straight lines in nature that's got straight lines yeah like I, was, I don't know um, 
I think it well could be. There's, there's pyramids all over the world, not just in Egypt, and they get, they've been discovered even on the poles and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it absolutely could be. We got told last night that there was an energy around here. I can't say as I've felt an energy, but maybe there is the closer you get. But uh, yeah, it's interesting nonetheless. Um, I don't think we'll get any closer though. That's what it is. Yes, good to meet you. That was pretty cool. Can't speak a word, neither of us can speak the other one's language, but that seems to mean a thing. <laughs> What's going on, dude? Strawberries from the roadside, man. Utterly delicious. I'm just breezing over my phone and uh, a breaking news of a mass shooting. Uh, a boy, 14-year-old boy, arrested in a Serbian school in the centre of Belgrade, which is our next destination. So, no, totally uh, isolated, unrelated. I'm not sure we were ever going to go to Belgrade anyway, but coincidental. Hmm. Which is contrary to everything else we've learned, that everybody we've met here in Bosnia has been absolutely lovely. Everybody. And I know you're going to get these sort of things everywhere, so... Yeah, it's what it is, I guess, from that sense. Awful, though. So we headed east, safe in the knowledge that today was going to be a great day. The sun was shining, the roads were windy, and Bosnia was being as beautiful as ever. Another hour and another change of plans said to you guys earlier that we just read on the BBC about a shooting in Serbia and that's where we were headed we were headed to Belgrade area and I don't think that the security of Al uh, Serbia is a massive concern to us but the BBC's, BBC's reporting that it's put the country into three days of national mourning and that's a concern to us because you know the internet would suggest they take days of national mourning rightly so very seriously we're looking for accommodation places to eat etc I think it just makes life incredibly difficult. So, another, yet another re-evaluation of plans. We're gonna head further south in Bosnia. It's a beautiful place. And then we can take in Kosovo um, and Albania and all the rest of it. But what, what this is really showing us is just how frequent our plans are changing all the time. The, the previous trips that we've done, we rigidly, or semi-rigidly at least, stayed to our plan. This plan is changing. Literally every half day we've changed part of the plan and it's just, it's crazy. It's kind of fun, it's, you know, we just happen to lose control of it and, and that's the adventure, but not what we'd planned in any measure. So you just saw these guys on the side of the road as we were riding past and uh, it was like they've had a puncture or something. Turn around to come check shot, make sure they're okay. It seems like they've got everything in hand, so we're gonna get out of there here. They call the way from, uh, they've come all the way from Poland and when we said, where are you going? He went, don't know. So that's a pretty cool thing. So we'll get out of their way, I think. That was our view from our hotel room. We stayed at Park Villa Park Hotels, or b, b it's a hostel really. It was 35 pounds a night, and it was amazing. Um, Bosnia, if you're wondering, is really affordable really affordable a pint of beer is about two pounds thirty but anyway have a look at this and so we finished packing our bags and headed south ready to explore Montenegro and Albania we couldn't wait gutting so yeah we sat just the borders a half a kilometer up there or so south bosnia beauty not sure what to do time to plan <laughs> 